Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I look back at the first part of the year, I'm doing the Courtier Crisis book tag. So this is a series of, of questions inviting people to reflect back on their reading in Q1 of the year. So I'm filming this on the 1st of April, so it felt like an appropriate time to do it. So um, let's go through the questions. So this tag was created by Royson's Reading. Um, I will leave a, a link to it. I haven't been tagged uh, by anybody uh, to do it, and I won't be tagging people at the end of it either, because this is just it's just one of those ones that you do at a certain point in the year. Um, anyway, let me go through the questions. Um, so the first question is, how many books have you read so far this year? Uh, so 53, I just had a look. Um, I don't have a good reads goal anymore. I found that was uh, that was driving the wrong behaviours in me. Um, but I do keep track of what I have read um, in, a, in a spreadsheet. So I've had a look at that and I've read 53 books so far this year. Um, second question, have you read, uh, have you already found a book that you think might be a 2023 favourite? So if I think about what I'm expecting to be my, you know, what kind of books I'm expecting to be in my top 10 list at the end of the year i think i definitely have found some favorites already and i've got i've got three books here which i, I would be surprised if they don't make that list at the end of the year um so those are the yellow wallpaper by charlotte perkins gilman which i've just read in the last week or so um which is just a fantastically atmospheric and interesting horror short story um house seller haunted house by grady hendrix which was just a wonderfully enjoyable um horror novel just so much going on in it great character work really creepy at times some fantastic set pieces i absolutely loved it um and then bomber by len dayton which i read back in january which is just a brilliant book about 24 hours during the second world war um following a bombing raid so just a really interesting examination of you know all the different sides all the different aspects of um of, of the of that conflict really and and how the lives of ordinary people were you know were affected by it and how indeed all the people involved in it were ordinary people so yeah a, a really really great book um next question then uh if uh if not well, i'm going to answer it anyway if not what was your favorite book you read that wasn't quite five stars so i'm not sure if this is my favorite favorite book that i haven't given five stars to but it but i thought it was I was kind of reflecting on the question and thinking about what's what's the difference between a four star book and a five star book, and sometimes it can be really marginal, can't it? And I think I think this one is a good example of that. So this is Cunning Folk by Adam Neville, which I read quite recently. This was a really great book. I really really enjoyed this book, but I think there were a couple of bits that just could have been tightened up a bit that would have made it a five star read. But equally, if I think about books that I have given five stars to this year some of those definitely had flaws and sometimes I think there's something that just speaks to you so directly from a book that even even though there are things about the book that aren't perfect you still you know it's still a five-star read for you because you get that real personal connection with it um so yeah a bit of a rambly a bit of a rambly answer to that question but I'm, I'm going with this one cutting folk um, next question uh, any one star books or least favorite book of the year so no one star books um, to be honest it's very unusual for me to give a book one star because I only give a star writing if I've finished a book and um, if I'm hating a book that much I'll probably DNF it so I have had a few DNFs uh, but in terms of books I finished my least favorite book was Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculak which I just thought was a just really shallow and, and quite manipulative in the way it was written and b had this horrible twist at the end which i personally just detested um so yeah that would be that would be my least my least favorite book of the year um okay next one then most read genre so far so i haven't been scientific about this but having had a skim through my lists i think it's pretty much a tie between crime and horror uh, and i think I have read a lot of stuff this year that's not, or so far this year, that's not crime and horror, but obviously those are my, you know, my main genres. And I read a lot of horror at the start of the year because I was taking part in this collab video where we read, where people read uh, Goodreads Choice Award winners. Um, and I had horror as a genre, so that meant I read quite a lot of horror for that. And, it, and indeed, 
read, I think I started them last year, but I read pretty much all of the odd Thomas books by Dean Coots uh, in the early part of this year, which I really didn't enjoy very much at all. Um, so horror is definitely out there, but equally in the last couple of months, I've been making more of an effort to read more kind of vintage crime and, and crime novels that were really important to the kind of formation of the genre as we know it today. Um, so I think crime and horror are, are, are pretty much tied to be honest with you. Uh, next one then is a book that surprised you um, so for this one I'm going to go with Hog by Samuel R. Delaney which I did a review of a while ago which is one of the most repellent books I've ever read I knew it was going to be disgusting and appalling and disturbing going into it because it because it has that reputation uh, and indeed it was it was a very difficult book to finish and a lot of people you know a lot of people we had kind of a group read going on on it and a lot of people bowed out um, and we're very glad that they bowed out. And I, it's certainly not a book that I would recommend that anyone forces themselves to read. It's a really difficult and horrible <laughs> book at times. What surprised me about it then is not how horrible it was, but how parts of it have stayed with me since I finished it. Um, and I read it, you know, a couple of months ago now. So there are things in that book, both disgusting things, but also more philosophical things that have kind of stuck with me since I finished it and I wasn't expecting that I was expecting to struggle to get through it and then just put it aside and that be it but it really has lingered with me in, in a way that I'm finding quite interesting um, uh, albeit disgusting at times <laughs> okay next question a book that's come out in 2023 that you haven't read yet but want to uh, so for that one I'm going to go with this one the trees grew because I bled there by Eric LaRocca um so I've read a couple of LaRocca's books. I read um, Things Got Worse Since We Last Spoke, which was the one that like, really blew up, which I thought was was good but overrated. Um, and then I also read, uh, I've got the name of it now, uh, You've Lost a Lot of Blood, which I thought was um, was better. I preferred that one. Um, and I, I think um, LaRocca has really, really interesting ideas uh, in their books. And I thought um, things had got worse since we last spoke was maybe a bit too drawn out for the ideas that it had. And although we could have developed those ideas more, I'm, I'm, I'm still not quite clear on what my problem with it was, but I know I didn't love it. Um, so really interested to see what LaRocca does with short stories. So this is a short story collection. Um, I feel like their their style and their imagination suit may suit short stories better for me as a reader so i'm really looking forward to reading this and isn't it a beautiful edition as well plus it's plus it's it's signed too which is which is always nice so yeah looking forward to that very much um right moving on then um what goal you've made that you're succeeding at so i only really made one goal this year i think um which was my 50 books to read before i'm 50 goal which i actually made i think just towards the end of last year and I haven't completed it yet. I've got to complete it this month, but I'm, I'm just about on track. Um, so yeah, that seems to be going okay. Um, and then the, the next question is one goal uh, that you made that you need to focus more on. And for this, I'm not sure there's a goal I made that I need to focus more on, but what I think I need to focus more on is non-goal oriented reading. Um, and I said this in my uh, kind of future plans for the channel video the other day. I feel like I've become a bit too bogged down in goals. And actually, what I need to do is spend some time just reading whatever I fancy. Um, so I think the goal I'm giving myself now is is not to have so many goals, um, which I, I guess kind of works. OK, final question then is new to you booktubers for 2023 that you'd recommend. And this is an interesting one. So these are not new channels I'm going to talk about. And, and they're quite big channels as well. But they're channels I had no awareness of at all until I got invited to be in that collaboration video that I did, the Goodreads Awards one. Um, and it's very easy to get stuck in a silo, I think. Um, and I think we tend to do that in, you know, in, in many things in our lives, but particularly in social media, you get stuck following a group of people and you follow more people who've been recommended by people in that group. Um, so the group, you know, the group might grow but it but it grows in its in in its own form if that makes sense it doesn't necessarily change it just gets bigger you just get more similar people added to it which is you know which is kind of natural 
But that collab video opened me up to a whole different side to booktube that I hadn't even realised existed really. And I'd, I'd very foolishly assumed that the bit of booktube I knew about was kind of booktube, that you know that was kind of it, apart from the really big channels I knew about, like Jack, Jack in the Books or whatever he's called. Um, I kind of assumed that the booktube I was in was, was booktube, but it's not. Booktube's huge. Booktube's much bigger than I thought it was, and there's many different facets to booktube. So exploring some of those different areas of booktube through the, the channels I, uh, the creators I met through doing this collaboration has been really interesting to me. Uh, and a couple I've really, really enjoyed out of that group uh, are Books Like Whoa uh, and Bookish Realm, um, both of whom make really interesting videos and always have something really interesting to say. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my two recommendations, but they're, you know, they're quite big channels already. They're certainly a lot of small channels. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Let me know how your reading has gone in quarter one of the year. Let me know if you've got your own answers to any of those questions. Uh, and as always, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.